it's rainy and here in pretty sunny central Florida so I can't take my car out for a drive so instead I think it's time for a little engine run video that's right got the spare engine sitting here haven't done anything in a little while but to make a couple changes I decided to install my I think I've done this before but why not it's time for refresh that's my uh, see-through color tune plug what I think what I was going to do today was start up and show the effects of various things on changing the fuel mixture on the stock um, uh, 280Z uh, L Jetronic fuel injection system. So let's crank it up and we'll start off with what is it, how does it run when it's cold? The engine's stone cold, hasn't been running in a couple days. It's probably about, I don't know, maybe 65 degrees out here. Sounds from the uh, spark. So 
sorry about that. But one of the things you can do to, to isolate things like uh, misfires, you can undo one plug at a time, one ignition, uh, one uh, injector plug at a time. In every case, the, the RPM drop should be consistent. Let's do a real quick demo. Lost one, bring it back. Take one, lose one, bring it back. Kind of convenient having the vacuum gauge here. That's a good indicator of the quality of the engine. So, vacuum gauges can be handy for a lot of things. That's an example of the easy one to like, digitize, if you will, the effect of disconnecting. If you don't have a tack, you normally you'd have a tachometer hooked up, you can do it that way too. Alright. Yeah, that mixture is definitely leaning out a little bit. I'll try the oil dip stick again. There you can see that oil dip stick is out. Out. You can see it's definitely leaner. Put it back in, rinse it right up. Get a little gas. do is demonstrate how things are supposed to work. Watch the fuel pressure. Turn the light on. Hold on a minute. Watch the oil pressure vary as the vacuum changes. You saw the vacuum change. Now we'll do the oil pressure. I'm not, I've been oil pressure. I meant fuel pressure. Sorry. Speaking of those, there's your oil pressure. And the temperature is slowly coming, not quite there yet. I can feel it just starting to warm up. It's probably just cracking open. But eventually, I think at idle it always has a slight yellowish light there. It might be a little bit closer to the blue, but you kind of want a rich idle. It you know, gives you a more, uh, more consistent run. We'll slowly throttle up this time, see the effect. you'll see it goes completely dark. That's because it, there's a fuel cut that takes place at certain RPMs. So, yeah, now it's getting much less yellow. It's hard to see this camera turn light. It might show better with the light off now. In fact, uh, let's really make it dark in here. Don't worry, I won't leave the garage door open long down the road. It's going to be able to see it. There you go. Okay. Nice blue. It's actually hard to see in this color, but it's kind of a yellowish blue. You've got a nice idle mix going on right there. Up above 20, but you can't see that. Uh, I'm right at 20. Before, uh, before the carbon monoxide builds up too much. I want you to see the color mainly though. Let's do the thing again here. Ready? Here goes the oil dip. You can really tell the difference now. You hear it. You see how much leaner that is. I'm going to close it back up. And if I undo the oil cap at this point, you got to really just shut down. Now, just for fun, I'm going to show you the effect of manipulating the flap here. Okay, I'm going to give it some uh, more fuel. Look how yellow I got. That was for me just touching that flap. So that's why it's so critical about having that spring pressure set properly. If uh, that flap spring is too loose, allowing that flap to open up too much, you get a much richer run. I mean, it doesn't take a whole lot, too. So, my suggestion is don't mess with that if it's okay. You know, you don't need to. The correct 
way to adjust that idle mixture, by the way, is there's a bypass screw on the airflow meter that lets air go around the flap. And you can adjust that to get this idle mixture set just perfectly. And the way I set it, get, when I say just perfectly, is once the car's warmed up and running like this, and everything has got a nice mixture there, kind of an orangey, bluey look, I look sick it does this happen? Does, does that have that effect? Hear a change? Maybe we'll see the seat on here. I don't know. Yeah, it just drops a little bit. Back in. Okay. So, what I'm looking for there is so lean on the idle that just that tiny little bit of air leak through the composite crankcase ventilation system is enough to upset the air, flow mix the air fuel mixture. If you have it set too rich, that little bit of leakage doesn't have any effect, and you know, well, basically the aisle's too rich. All right? You want to get it to where that, that kind of effect seems to be perfect, at least from my experience on running my engine. Well, that's it for now. I just wanted you to, to see a few of the tests I look at. I look at, I look at fuel pressure. I look at vacuum. It's basically the condition of the engine, how good the rings and the valves and all that are working. I listen for overall balance, uh, stuck rings or other things that should cause this field to, to uh, oscillate somewhat as the one cylinder has screwed up and work. Um, also do it. And, and, uh, and I do the power test. I pull each, I disable each cylinder one at a time to make sure I have a nice even effect. That tells me that all the injectors are basically firing about the same. And I know my spark plugs are all about the same. And uh, make tweaks as necessary. Generally speaking, though, what you're going to find problems on are going to be air leaks in the connection of the airflow meter to the intake manifold. That's a biggie. The other big effect is this right here. The uh, well, you can't see it. Is the the uh, temperature sensor in the water jacket, which is hooked up to the, th to the thermostat housing that affects the, the mix. I, I'm not going to go into that right now, but uh, it should be about 2,000 ohms when it's cold, and when it's fully warmed up, you're looking at about 200 ohms, okay? And that change from the 2,000 ohms cold to the 200 ohms warm affects this mixture as well. If I were to set it back to 2,000 right now with it warmed up, you get back that super rich running mixture, which it doesn't need once the engine is up to operate. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Bye.